She was four years old when her life was turned upside down. Her and her eight siblings orphaned. For the next 11 years, she lived in a home filled with pain and abuse. But Trisha DeBoer didn't allow that to stop her from moving forward. She found a way out and a direction for her life, even going as far as to say that the enemy had planned to use planned to use to destroy me, the Lord turned for good. And that meant moving to Uganda two years ago to start a ministry. This is one remarkable story. Welcome, Tricia. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. You have, uh, we were saying in the, in the green room, it's a, a long story. There's so yeah, there's many, a lot. So, so much to it. But mm -hmm. I want to start, before we, we talk about today and what you're doing in Africa, mm -hmm. I want to kind of go back to your childhood and tell me about losing first your father at four and then subsequently your mom later on. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Well, I mean, four years old, I didn't really know a lot that was going on. Um, and it was a sudden, sudden uh, loss of our father mm. at the age of four. And he died of a heart attack. And a few years later, um, as my mom continued to struggle on her own, providing for nine children, um, she also passed. And so it was devastating for not only my family, but the community around yeah. and understanding that now there was nine children that were really on their own to survive. So it was very challenging, very shocking, and at times still unreal, unreal, yeah. And at four years old, did you understand all that was going on? I mean, all of a sudden you, you were separated. The community did try to keep as many of you together, mm -hmm. but at four, it probably was challenging for you to kind of understand why is this all happening? I was lost, and even at the age of six, I still don't think I could fully understand what was happening. And at that time, we were put into different homes. And amazingly enough, the community around us came together mm -hmm. to try and keep us within the same region so we could visit and have, have contact with each other, which has really been a blessing for all of us and also a testimony to that community and how good they were to us, so. And it was challenging for you because you went to a couple of foster homes and people found it a challenge taking care of a, a younger girl. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally you settled in a, a home for 11 years that was pretty abusive at times. It was, it was very challenging at times and um, I, I didn't feel very, very welcomed in that family and um why um i was at times set apart i felt set apart um as someone different and not belonging mm. and it's it's really important to me though that the community out there knows and um i love them mm -hmm. to this day i just saw them on the weekend and it's really important to me that um that they know that I love them. And despite the challenges and despite the, the, the feeling of not belonging and, and the rejection that I felt, um, the day-to-day -day rejection that I felt, um, God has given me grace mm -hmm. and I, I honestly love them very much. Um, well, that was, a, that was a journey that you had to go on to, was, to yeah. get to healing. Yes. Um, you, say, you say that there were times when you would just lock yourself in your room and try to take your life a couple of times. There was times when I would try and take my life. There was times when I felt like this was just a bad dream and yeah. one day I was going to wake up and be with my family again. That never happened. Mm. Um, it was painful. It was lonely. I spent most of my times in my bedroom because I was afraid to come out. I didn't know I didn't know what would await me if I went out the door. Mm. So it was really hard and it was a long 11 years, but God in his goodness had pulled me out of it and has brought me to today. And despite all of that pain um, and despite of all that rejection, God is good and God is faithful and he's my father now, you know? Tell us about that encounter with God because uh, you know, the, the CAS or the Children's Aid Society would mm -hmm. send you to camp every summer. Yes. And you'd go to this Christian camp and you'd hear, Jesus loves you, Trisha, Jesus loves you. And what would be your response? I would say, if Jesus loves me, then why did my parents die? Why am I afraid to live in my house? Why do I feel so unloved by those that are around me? It just did not make sense to me. Um, but at the age of 13, amazingly enough, I was at this camp again and they told me and they had a, 
they'd shown a drama of, of what Jesus had done and, mm. and how he'd given his life for me. And I didn't know anyone could love me that much. Mm. And that summer it changed my life. And it was just so nice to know that d despite everything that I'd been through for so long, that somebody actually loved me and somebody actually wanted me. And that I had a father that, that, that was going to be faithful to me. And it was, it was amazing, mm. it was amazing. Fast forward a couple of years, you got a job with Scott Mission, which many of our viewers might know because mm. uh, they're just down the street, they're down the highway, I should yeah. say, <laughs> uh, in Toronto. And you started ministering to young people in, in camps. And so that, that was interesting how God, again, used your story and, and what you had gone through to be able to help young people. Yeah, um, I, ha I worked at the Scott Mission for over 10 years, about 10 years. And, you know, again, the pain that I had experienced in the past, the challenges of being in foster care, of feeling rejection and all of those things I was now able to put into the kids and the youth that were around me. And... It's Isn't amazing it? yeah. how God can turn such a hard thing that we think, how, how are we ever going to get through mm -hmm. this, to something amazing and so good for His glory. And use you in the same ministry that you had been saved yeah. through, right? Yeah. Through youth ministry. Yes. yes. And so God, through that time, God was really um, impressing on you this desire and this um, need to pray for Africa. And so tell us about how Africa really took your heart mm -hmm. and, uh, and changed the next 10 years of your life as you prayed for this mm -hmm. continent. Well, it started, you know, I, I'm an orphan and mm -hmm. I didn't have parents and just hearing more and more about the amount of orphans in Africa and who God had become in my life, how he'd become a father in my life and a faithful father in my life. It started that way and just interceding and praying for orphans in Africa. But over time, um, it began to change into thinking of slavery and colonialism. And anytime I went into a bookstore, I just wanted something Africa. Mm. And it was 10 years of that, 10 years on my face, just praying for Africa. A place that you had never been. At that, no, I had never been. Point. Yeah. Right. The first trip I had was in 2005, where I had the ability to go and, and serve AIDS orphans. Mm. And I came back and was totally changed and loved even more with them. And uh, five years later, the Lord said, go. Mm. No, you have to, we can't gloss over that story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell us a story. You are sitting in a pew at church and God is speaking to you. Yeah. And, okay, I won't give away the rest. <laughs> you, you have to fill in the blank. Yeah, it, it had been a really intense week of prayer. Yeah. And um, on the Saturday night, I was praying, and the Lord said, go. And I said, I'm not going to Africa. No, I don't have finances. I'm not married. I had all of these reasons as to why I shouldn't be going to, to Africa. But he kept saying, go. And so the next morning, I went to church, and... Um, my pastor had no idea what I'd been going through and I'm praying and um, as I'm praying, um, the Lord is giving me a vision. Again, my pastor had no idea mm. what was going on and I'm praying and I'm, I'm hearing, I'm seeing a vision in front of me of, of myself in a boat and the Lord is on the water and he's reaching out his hand and he's saying, Trisha, it's time to go. You need to go to Africa. It's time to go. Take the step of faith. Let's go. And I'm wrestling in my mind like, uh. while this is happening, my pastor gets up and takes the microphone. No idea what I'd been through or what I'm hearing. And he says, you know, the Lord has given me specific words for people in the congregation today. And I'm praying and I finally, um, in the vision, I finally, and I audibly speak, I say, okay, God, I'll go. Okay, I'll go. Mm. And I step out of the boat. And as I step out of the boat, as soon as I did that, my pastor speaks in front of everyone on the mic and says, Trisha, he calls my name. Mm. And he says, Trisha, Africa will never be the same. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. I cried and I screamed and I jumped and I, it was, 
Yeah. 10 years, yeah. 10 years of interceding and not understanding why. God is amazing. Is. God is amazing. So two years ago, you go to Uganda, mm -hmm. you start Africa Arise. We're fast forwarding through a lot of, yeah. a lot of stuff. Tell us about um, the need there and, and the people that you've encountered mm. and, and, and why you feel that you need to be there at this mm. moment. Because you sold everything. You are, you are committed to staying in yeah. Uganda. Yeah, I quit my job. I gave everything and left for Uganda. Mm. And um, currently, right now, um, Africa Arise is serving in a slum in Kampala, which is in the southern region where many displaced people from the war in northern Uganda ran to for refuge. We have over 11,000 displaced people living in extreme poverty. Mm. And we are, um, they're trying to, we have former, former LRA soldiers, we have rape victims, we have witnesses of the most traumatic things. We have a lot of orphans, uh -huh. a lot of different, different challenges in this slum. And we're trying to bring counseling and, and restoration to them. We're not only doing counseling, we're doing discipleship. We want to do some economic. You know, I believe God has given us these hands mm -hmm. for a purpose, yeah. not, not for dependency. And so we're trying to do some economic empowerment. And in the end, you know, there's peace in northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. And we want to see these people return to their villages where there's life and there's at least food growing in their fields. Yeah. and, and not depending on the day-to-day -day work um, in the in a Choli quarter. And we have some pictures that you brought along yeah. um, that shows your work firsthand. So tell walk us through these. This is just an image of the of a Choli quarter of the slum. Okay. And you can see some of the 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 houses are made of mud. Mm. Um, these are people working in the stone quarry. The stone quarry is a main way of people surviving there and someone can work there from morning to night and all they'll make in one day is 70 cents. Wow, wow. So, yeah. This is just another, another image of the, slot, uh, the slum. You can see the, the sewage kind of yeah. running along the side there. Our office is actually very close to that location. So your office is actually in the slum. We're right in the wow. slum. This is a child. Uh, many times you'll see children working in the quarry desperate for school fees. Mm. Um, this was the day that the Lord called me into the slum. Mm. And this little girl, the Lord used her to speak to me and tell me that that was where I needed to be. Because you were crying out to God saying, God, if you want me to be here, you're going to have to send a child and send a sign. Yeah. So that little that girl. That was the child that, wow. that spoke. And who's, who are these? This is uh, just a group of our men and women um, that, w that have been through our counseling and discipleship program. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, we, we talk a lot about grace, and we've been talking about it this month uh, with Max Licato's book, but God has just shown so much grace, even through this story, Tricia, of mm -hmm. how God has taken you from one side to the other and been able to, as we said, use your story to be able to uh, help people on the other side of the world. Are you not amazed at just... I never thought I would be yeah. here today. God is amazing, and if... I, I, I've, I've said it many times, but I really believe that I'm a living testimony. Mm. You know, what the enemy had planned to do to kill and destroy me. And, and technically, if you look at society today, I shouldn't be where I am today. Mm. But God, in His grace and in His goodness and His faithfulness, has allowed me to come from a really broken situation to using that situation for something greater. Yeah. And if people want to find out more about Africa Arise, how can they, how can they do you that? You can go onto our website. It's just africaarise.ca. Yeah. And you're always looking for people to help. and We're looking support in, in many yeah. ways, um, whether that's prayer, whether that's finance, advocacy. There's so many ways that people can get involved with us. Um, we would love to have partners come along. Yeah, I hope they do. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Trisha's story just shows us so many times how... You know, we can come from such uh, painful um, backgrounds and not know where we're going, what God has planned for us, uh, up from down, we, we're just confused. But as Trisha has shown us, um, and God shows us time and time again, that there is grace in Him, and as long as we call on His name, that He will be there. And uh, even in Trisha's darkest moments of wanting to take her life, 
um, God has used that for her to be able to now witness to others and be able to show other young people that there is hope as an orphan, that there's hope, that there is a father that loves us and wants to take care of us. So if you are in that spot where Trisha was today, there are numbers at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to, uh, to give our prayer partners a call. They are there 24 seven. They are blessing. They're a blessing to this ministry and uh, they're always praying for us, always praying for those that watch. So feel free to, to give a call today.